Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the John G. Orles podcast. I, of course, am who else but Tommy else. And with me, as always, is the man on the beat from johngsbeat.com, Mr. John Abdul Roblowski. John, how are you? I won't stab you in the eye with a fork. I'm doing Ooh. okay. Ooh. Well, that's an Abdul joke. Ooh. Abdul the Butcher at the fork. What about Kareem Abdul Jabbar? Lou Elcindor? I mean, like, he didn't stab anyone with a fork. That Lou guy Elcindor. Helped. That guy, that guy was, uh, that guy was a co pilot on airplane, you know. All time leading scorer in the NBA, I believe. I believe he still is. Yeah. Unless, unless, uh, um, uh, LeBron's going to pass, so I'm not sure. But yeah, Skyhook. Nobody does the Skyhook anymore. Well, there's some moves that just should be uh, kept sacred. To... I think if you were a basketball player, you would do the Skyhook. I, I would probably do something dramatic. Yeah, I mean, if if it wasn't that, it would be something along those lines. Yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely try to sell whatever I was, whatever I was doing there. So. You know, get a pop out of the crowd for sure. It's kind of just inherent. So, uh, speaking of getting what number pop, would you be? What? What number would you wear? I or would, would it wear, depend on the sport. No, it wouldn't. I would wear I, this. Uh, generally, in in video games and things like that, if I have to pick a number, I usually go with thirty two. And the 32? only room, yeah. And here's yeah. why, and it's a really weird reason, but it's <laughs> it's because when I was a kid growing up, Fox was channel 32 and channel 32 had he-man and thundercats and all those types of shows and stuff so when i came home from school channel 32 not only did it come in clear you know because you're on an antenna back then but it had all the shows on it i watched and i liked so 32 kind of okay. became like an ingrained number in my head so that makes sense. Uh, so I have used thirty-two quite a bit in my my past for various reasons when needing a two-digit number. So, but speaking of pops, uh, and getting pops, we nice have a, we have a great we have a great guest on the show today. Someone we've really been uh, uh, working on getting for a while. We finally got her. Uh, we knew her and, uh, I've, I met her at least through, uh, being in resistance pro wrestling Same. and, um, uh, she is, she was not only a, a fantastic wrestler, but just one of the nicest people you'll ever meet and classy a, real, broad. a classy broad to say the least, Hashtag. to say the least, a classy broad. And of course we're talking about none other than hardcore Heather Owens. She's got a show coming up that she's promoting, and I wanted to talk to her. Well, we wanted to talk to her about that, and I wanted to talk to her about a couple other things that I know that we have in common, and we got to sit down with her. It was a great conversation, and uh, so let's just jump right into it, and here we go. Let's welcome Miss Hardcore Heather Owens. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show none other than Hardcore Heather Owens. Heather, hey. how are you? Good. How are you guys? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing fabulous. Long are you time. hyped up for your Bengals game tonight? Yes, because originally I was like, I thought it was going to be like a 6.30 playing time, and they're like, no, it's like 8.30 or something, so I'm like, okay, I'm good. So. Oh, okay. Who well, they we're in Miami? Yeah, they're playing the Dolphins. They're in Cincinnati, oh. so. Oh. You yeah. guys got it. They didn't want to, they didn't want to go down to Florida and. Play, play, play the hurricane. <laughs> it's a, little, a little wet down there. Oh. Um. So, well, we're very glad to have you on the show. We've been wanting to get you on the show for quite some time, and um, uh, I think we have a few things to talk about. In fact, I forgot to grab something, but I'll grab it in a second. Um, I'm prepared. It, just take it easy. Uh, but uh, before we get into uh, all the things I want to talk about. I want to just get out front. Uh, one of the main reasons we have you on here, you've got, you're promoting a, a wrestling show coming up. Yes. And it's not squared circle. I mean, you know, 
I'm yeah, always yeah. promoting that. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother thing. Oh, we're yeah, getting to that but, too. But but yeah. this is but this is something different. So uh, enlighten us. Tell us about it. What's what's what you got up your sleeve? What are you doing? Yeah. So actually, since January, I became um, one of the uh, board members for Cincinnati Pride, and um, so um. You know, I've been volunteering and doing all these, you know, like they have Pride Night at the zoo and the Reds game and all this crazy stuff. And part of my task is to have an all queer wrestling show in the Cincinnati area. So it's like a big feat to to run not just your own wrestling show, um, but finding the right types of people to fit, you know, into that show. Right. So, um. The one thing that I miss about wrestling is just showing up, doing and what not I need having to, do to worry and about any of it. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there is, so, there, there's just so much involved. Um, every you know, ring rental. You know, I don't have a ring, so it's like getting mm-hmm. ring rental and chairs and the wrestlers and, and the, the getting budget sat, and, and the sound. Building. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, um, but uh, it is November fourth. Um, it's at Humble Monk Brewery, which is awesome because re- wrestlers love drinking. So it's at a brewery. Oh, yeah. um, it's in Northside, which is a, a big LGBTQ uh, community in Cincinnati area. Cool. So, um, yeah, it's November 4th. It's a Friday. So ticket sales are going good right now. So fingers nice. crossed. We just got to keep it going. And, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, people can get tickets at CincinnatiPride.org. It's right there on the main page. Click there. Boom. Back so are you, so are you like the the head person in charge of uh, putting this whole thing together yes. at this point? Yeah. Yes. So you're you're really getting absolutely those. everything. Now, have you ever been? I know you've promoted uh, and or been a part of promoting other shows and stuff, but have you ever been in this position where you've had to do like the whole damn thing like this? No. <laughs> absolutely <Yeah>. not. <laughs> and I'm like my anxiety like i'm one of those anxious people and my brain never turns off um Mm -hmm. and so it's like if i'm thinking about one thing if i'm just like doing the shoot job my mind is still in the back like okay i gotta do this and this and promote and blah 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 and so are you gonna be roughing no, no, I I got too much shit going on. There's no, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more thing. What's the difference at this point? Yeah. <laughs> no, believe me, I'm going to be in the back, manning everybody. Be like, okay, stick to your times, because right. I don't want to have to go out there. And you're gonna just, be uh, you're gonna be that person now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to. You have to. Yeah. I do. Well, and the thing is too, it's um, it's taking wrestling and it's taking drag queens so there's going Mm. to be you know a couple wrestling matches and then some drag performances a couple matches intermission so it's taking two different worlds and making it into one so um we have a drag queen as the ring announcer she's never done that before ever so you know that's super exciting because she is such an amazing host for you know all these other events she'll be fine yeah i'm sure yeah oh yeah 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 it's uh it's I I had one experience actually with a resistance show where I actually we we didn't have a ring announcer and so I had a girl I knew who I knew had a lot of personality and we she had never even been to a wrestling show before and the next thing right. you know she's out there in the middle of the ring doing it but sometimes those are some of the best people to do it because they come in with a very fresh a very fresh uh, perspective on it and uh yeah she did do good and it was it was fun and like afterwards people are asking her for autographs and stuff and she's like ah yeah <laughs> like, yeah like that's but yeah, that's um awesome. so let me ask you this oh go ahead go ahead no no john please go no, ahead i was gonna ask if uh is this do you hope to have more than one show eventually or is this so, just a one-off for now uh so what we hope to do is make this an annual an annual thing Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just like how, uh, Cincinnati Pride has their festival and parade every year, the Reds night, the zoo night, Kings Island. Um, so we hope to have this as a once a year type of thing, because honestly, I don't think I could do it like monthly or, or even quarterly. Just, yeah. just no. I don't have a ring, you know, it'd be different if I actually had a company and I could rely on myself but when i have to rely on so many other people yeah. it stresses me out i can't 
So and you and you know how it is the day of a show, like anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So it's like you've got that in the back <laughs> of your head too, where you've got to be able to like make calls on the fly and you know and and make last minute you know decisions and stuff. So yeah, I think that's the biggest thing too right now is. So if it's, you know, you just have a normal wrestling show and somebody's like, oh, you know, I'm not going to be able to make the show, it's a lot easier to find said pro wrestler. Right. But when, like, I'm It's a very specific working, thing that you're working with here, yeah. And I've already had to replace two people. So oh, I've man. already been trying to run around and most people are already booked because it's a Friday and it's a month away. So. Yeah. It's a challenge. Um, be good. So. John and I, over the you know course of our time being on this show and and, yeah. and other conversations, have done our fair share of uh, armchair um, uh, promoting and talking about like, you know, the, this is you know like if I was running a show, this is the way I would do it, and this is mm -hmm. you know and everything. Is there anything that you've done in the course of this that you have done as a result of learning from other promoters' mistakes? Well, I don't think that I've been put in that situation yet. I think it's going to come down more to day of the show. Um, you know, I just want, it's just, it's going to be a fun show. I don't want any drama. And that's the one reason, that's one of the things that I do not miss about wrestling at all is a drama. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's always there. So no drama at my show. As soon as I see anything, I will come at you and I will nip it like, no. Yeah. Just, For no, me. so. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, cause we've talked about like, just, um, you know, like making sure you've got enough staff on hand to cover all of the different stations and things like that, to make sure that right. you've got, you've got someone for your music. You've got someone to talk to the, the, mm -hmm. the, the boys and the girls in the back and stuff for you. If you need to get messages back there or take right. care of something, you know, people tearing tickets at the door, people either work in concessions or at least, you know, getting, you know, lines organized and things like that. I mean, there's a there's a lot that goes into getting a show put together and I, I'm, as you know, and, uh, I, you know, we, you know, John and I, as far as we're concerned, could run a perfect show, but you know, until you're really, <laughs> of course. we also, yeah. we also haven't had to actually do it though either. So, you know, well, I uh, co-ran, I co-ran one with, with, you know, the shots of top PL Myers. Ones. Yeah. The, the elephant show. That's right. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, yeah, I understand. I understand. I'm just, I, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I do think that one thing definitely is how many times do you get to a show and, you know, your pay is shorter than you were expecting or, you know, it's like wound up dollars from the door. Um, the one thing that I'm making sure of is everybody is going to have envelope in hand, like, right there like it's not mm -hmm. going to be oh well we didn't do as good at the door or yeah you know, there are no. no that's not there they, they still perform they're going to right. perform that's that's on you so no all it's, those it's the, it's the promoter's job to promote the show and get the asses in the seats now it's also partially the responsibility of the of the wrestler to promote yeah. themselves and promote the show and make people come and see it. So it's not 100% on the promoter, but I'd say it's 75% on the promoter, right. you know. Well, and the thing is, too, with the wrestlers is I tried to, since it is a Cincinnati-based show, um, you know, I have people coming in from Columbus, Indianapolis, um, like Louisville. So I really wanted to get as many local guys as I could. Mm -hmm just because they would be able to promote more than let's say an Indiana guy. Sure. They're going to draw more. There's more people around the oh, area yeah. who, who know who they are and will be interested in seeing them in this type mm -hmm. of thing. So no, that's and they're very friends. smart. And that's, yeah. and, and, and not enough. And exactly. I mean, like everybody's going to know each other then too. I mean, it's like, it just, it does create a, a, a real, you know, comfortable environment as well for everybody involved. So um what kind of crowd like how much you know I, i've been to shows at breweries and stuff like how many people could this place hold um so i would like to have at least 200 people um Lowered. so how the brewery is it's in the back area where they actually do the brewing mm -hmm. and they had a movie screening release they just you know on one of the walls they projected it on and they had 
you know, over a hundred people there in just one section. So with the wrestling ring and just, you know, chairs and standing room, I'm, I'm hoping for 200 plus. That's a good size crowd though. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm going big. Like I am hoping for, for a huge crowd. We'd good. expect nothing less from hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're hoping for the same for you as well. Well, that's very cool. Um, yeah, that's exciting. And uh, so with all of that going on, uh, how are you doing otherwise? Uh, what's going on in the world of uh, Heather Owens? I mean, have you uh, – uh, I know you, you were doing the, the Best Friends podcast at one point. You're roughing. You're roughing or you raft. <laughs> You reffed. Let's let's. Yeah, I, yes. I think so, I think you're kind of like really, you know, pinning the whole ref thing on her. You know, right. so, you've done me, multiple refs. <laughs> let me clarify. I am still fully retired from wrestling. Mm. I've only I've been in one battle royal, and that was for my friend who passed away. So it was sure. a charity show. Sure. That you know doesn't really even count. It was yeah. battle royal. I didn't take yeah, a pump totally. or anything. Yeah. And then the refing is I've refed twice at Squared Circle because, you know, it's Squared Circle. I want to do something, so yeah. we have that. And then more recently is I did have the, you know, the one-off refing thing that I did, and that was more of like, um, it was actually an all-girl show, and Cincinnati Pride sponsored one of the matches, and I was like, well, it would be cool if I refed that match so then i ref that one yeah. so it's a little sprinkled in but i'm fully retired no you get to you know Good. but even when you're retired you can still get to do you know refing commentary things like that i mean there's still other things to still get involved with if you want to if you know yeah. you want to jump in well, michael something. came back yeah. for one match that didn't count <laughs> he's still retired yeah yeah that's a, like i get there's no retirement in pro wrestling i get that Maybe in two or three years, but right now, like, my body still hurts, my my neck, my, that's not getting any better, you know? So it's like, I've been going to the chiropractor and back yeah. doctors, and it's just, you know, I'm, I don't want to fall down anymore. All right, John, you take it from here for 30 seconds. I need to get something that I wanted to show. All right, now that, now the show really kicks <laughs> oh, so while, while Tommy's going. away because he was unprepared. Let's talk about the Squared Circle Expo. It's April, it's in April. It's coming yes. up quickly. Yes. Tell us about so, that. So it's funny because I, I have to keep reminding myself when the actual dates are because I just keep telling everybody it's Easter weekend, but not Easter. Yeah. So it's April 7th and 8th, which is that Friday and Saturday. Um, so you know, people can come, have a good time, and then still be wherever they need to be on Easter Sunday. So I think, you know, that's that's really good. And that's the same time we had it last year. So, I mean, it seems to work out for everybody. We had a great turnout last year. So, I mean, we're hoping for the same. And oh, yeah. Better. I, I said that, that that wrestling show on Saturday night, now you're going to have two nights of it, but that wrestling show on Saturday night, and my buddy Tony was there with me, we both agreed that that was one of the best indie, if you will, indie shows we've ever been to. Top to bottom, that, that card was awesome. Well, you can you can thank the husband for that one. He's the one that really put like the show together. Um, you know, of course, when you have the entire lineup, we're like, okay, what would we want to watch? Like, as a wrestling fan, what matches do we want to see? And that's you know, that's what we lined up. So I think that really reflected that helps being you know in the past in the sure. business. Oh so, yeah, for sure. Well, like you said, as a worker, you know, you know what. I think the the pitfalls are of of certain shows and things like that, and if it's one thing John and I have definitely we we rarely agree on very much, but <laughs> if it's one thing we agree on is a show starting on time. If it says seven thirty, then it's seven thirty. That bell better ring, or there should be an announcer in the ring, or something going on. You know, waiting like an extra fifteen minutes to see if more people show up or whatever. It's not fair to the people who got there on time. No, it's you know? not. And and yeah. they just want to, you know, it's as much as they want to spend the night hanging out and everything. They also want the show to start on time too. So. Well, yeah, and for the wrestlers, you know, a lot of them travel 
Out right. The and they want to get out on time too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, I can't stand. I'm very, I'm one of those. I will be there for me to be on time. It's me being, you know, 10 minutes early. So, yeah. And I, and I have to say that the Squared Circle Expo, you guys run an extremely smooth show. Well, thank you. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's smooth from, from beginning to end, every part of it. There was no glitches. You guys are on hand. Well, you just didn't like see them. <laughs> that's fine, too. yeah. I mean, well, that's like that's a sign of a well run show, though. Yeah, yeah, but it's not like you guys are invisible promoters, you're all out there. You, Ed, Carrie, Adolfo, and I have to mention, Ed probably isn't a fan of this, but the spear that uh, Adolfo hit him with that that popped the crowd big time. I popped in the back, I it looked great because Adolfo has no training, no nothing, but yeah, and he's just you know, compared to Ed, he's a small guy, yeah, nobody expected that. Um, speaking of smooth, I did oh, want to, I, I did want to bring up, to go this level. I, I can't not bring it up. It's one of my favorite things I've ever seen is the match you had with BD smooth in resistance. Uh, stop it. I, <laughs> I, I just, I, I, I remember just like, I'm standing there with you and with Jacques and Jacques just calm, just casually is like. Yeah, you're wrestling smooth tonight. And you're like, yeah, right. <laughs> you're like, and he's like, no, really. And, and I'm looking at you like, yeah, he's, he's serious. But honestly, though, that was one of my favorite things I ever saw. You dragged his ass all around that place <laughs> and beat the shit out of him and hit him. There's with a every... really good photo. I, yeah. that, that, that's the one thing I do remember, like with the photo with me having him and he's like, ah, I, it's, yeah. a, it's a <laughs> screenshot I took from the video. I, I just, I saw that in the video and I hit the pause button and I just screenshot it. I was like, that's beautiful. I'm like, that's <laughs> so great. I just love that so much. I mean, you didn't know what you were getting into and you just went and took his ass to task the whole night. I mean, it just, it was great. And he played it very well and you just, it was just, I And I it. knew going against somebody like him, mm. it wasn't going to be a wrestling fives or a match. So why right. even attempt to make it, you know, it was yeah. an entertaining Yeah, this is brawl. not, this is not Benoit and Angle. Yes, no. this is, <laughs> this is, yeah. I wasn't trying for that. Right. So. Um, but that aside, um, one of the things you and I have in common, uh, that we, we kind of go back and forth on Facebook a little bit with is, uh, the golden girls and, oh, yes. uh, oh, and real quick, I apologize if Squanchy makes an appearance, he's, uh, he's lingering around. So well, he's welcome. He's fine. <laughs> we have Tommy, we could have Squanchy. <laughs> Thanks buddy. Um, my birthday was about a month ago, and one of my clients, I, I, I have honestly never bought one piece of Golden Girls memorabilia. I'm not stuff. buying that at it's all. It's never, never once. Everything now I have begins, is some, though. <laughs> everything has been something somebody gave me. But for my birthday, okay. I have not shown this online yet, but I was waiting. I was going to show it to you when I got it. This is a Golden Girls, Good Night Girls. Uh, bedtime story about the Golden Girls. So our our listeners can't see it, but oh my god, that's fabulous! Is, oh, yeah. the little workout. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. There's some classic scenes in there and stuff, and you know, it's like they did a real good job of Sophia and then everybody and every, so they make I, so much Golden Girl stuff now. It's like on Facebook just before you know coming on here there was an ad and it said the golden ghouls and it was oh. golden girls as zombies. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> John doesn't quite understand my affinity for the golden girls and, uh, or, it, or it takes you back to a, to a better, cleaner, yeah, a happier existence. place. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That, was, that was me and my grandmother on Saturday nights watching TV. Yep. We watch, We'd watch Gold, we'd watch Golden Girls, we'd watch Empty Nest, and then get through the news, and then Saturday Night Live would come on, and we'd watch that. You know, and that was our Saturday nights, and we had popcorn and yeah. ice cream, and we hung out and stuff. I mean, like I, so every time I see that show, it just takes me right back to that. Now, but see, I'm a, a few years older than both of you, so 
you know, maybe, maybe it's just, uh, I have a different show that would take. Well, me. I was telling John that at this yeah. point in his life, he would be in the, same, in the same age range as the golden girls. So he, he himself is a golden boy. Which, but, which still uh, blows my mind that Rose was the oldest. Yeah. Like, like yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Sophia maybe was the youngest. I don't, I don't know. Sophia is my was, spirit animal. When yes. I'm old, I want to be Sophia. Yeah. Uh, you're on your me, way here well me well me too me too oh you're now, definitely on your way this guy and i'm gonna throw him under the bus right now this guy you know i told him i'm like yeah when we get heather on, i gotta i gotta talk to her a little bit about the golden girls he's like well if a couple of girls want to talk about the golden girls i'm not gonna stop them <laughs> i'm like golden I'm girls like, is for everybody thank you everybody. thank you and i knew you would back me up on that i knew you would back me up on that so since we're talking about the golden girls i just thought about this and let me get the well one of my really good friends nicole she just happened to send this to me she found it on amazon or something she was like hey just thinking of you and it's a golden girl's purse, oh, which is like wow. a Sophia purse. Yeah, that's a has, Sophia purse. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it she'd has have like that, the little faces. Yeah, oh, she'd have yeah. that. She'd have that slung over her forearm into her elbow. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm. So I also get a lot of golden girl stuff from from outsiders, from friends and family. I, well, this I is take, it, take it all. Probably, probably a dumb question, but I'm sure you've got the golden girls Funko Pops because I think you've got a few Funko Pops look just just a few just a few funko pops in her collection there somebody <laughs> in the other room yeah. collects a lot more than i do so okay. no um the golden girls i do have all of them those are mine um mm -hmm. i collect golden girls i collect uh power rangers uh the labyrinth so there's yeah. certain things that yeah. i collect yeah, I'm very specific with I'm not my like pop. a mass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm very specific with my pops. I'm not trying to just get every pop that's ever made. I mean, like I've I've got like it's got to be something that jumps out at me that's like, oh, yeah. I got to have that one. You know, I mean, it's like the one most consistent themed one I have is is it's it's wrestling and probably He-Man. And then I've had I haven't been lucky enough to find any of the golden girl pops i've gotten the pez pops you know that they mm, have yeah. of them so i've got the whole, i've got all four girls for that but um uh but yeah it's uh i have not there's, gotten the actual there's quite a few of the golden girls because there's i know there's at least two different like releases from like different years and then there's a couple that are like bedazzled um, well, there's a million different ways you can go with it too. I mean, you can have right. like oh, yeah. you, could, you could have like Blanche and Rose in the in the cat outfits or something like that, or even if you put them in the nun outfits when they did that that episode and stuff. And yeah. you know, yeah, John's well, shaking that's what his they head did at with me, the friends. But... Right. Well, we have the friend, the friends, you know, pop. So it's like you have, you know, the the turkey on Monica's mm -hmm. head, and you know, right. You have all yeah. the different ones. So we yeah. tried to get passes to the Golden Girls Con. And we, did, um, and we were, we were I denied. Got, I got ignored. <laughs> we were, yeah, I, we weren't denied. I, we were just ignored. Yeah, I guess that's yeah. what happened. I think it was the same. I, I was so like, oh, my God, I want to go. I think it was the same weekend of, of something else was going on. I don't know. It was. Yeah. I was, man, I really want to go. Because, yeah, because it was up in, like, Chicago, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing was, is when we looked into it, though, I think it was like it was a very small affair, and it was in like a you know Holiday Inn type of thing. Oh. Like it was, but they, they it wasn't like it was. And said they would love to have me there. They would love to cover it. They'll get back to me, and then they never got back to me. And then I, I emailed them again, and I got nowhere. I think it was because of Tommy. Heather, you could answer this for me. Have they made yes. any other characters from the Golden Girls pop wise outside of the four girls? So they haven't done no. like they haven't done like Stan Stanley. or Stan or anything like that. The nope. yutz, that yutz, you know. <laughs> I mean, really, like that would be the main one that they would release. You, you would know? think like, so. I mean, it. You know, yeah. hey, it's me. Stan. They got them in I their mean, bowling it's... shirts, but it's only yeah. the girls. So yeah, yeah, that was a whole thing. I remember that one. Yeah. No, if they release, if, if they released an empty nest set. Would you get that because it was the spinoff of Golden I, Girls? I, I sure as hell would. I but see, I watched Empty Nest, but yeah, I would. But would you I get it because it's probably Golden Girls? Probably wouldn't. 
Okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't get it because it was Golden Girls related necessarily. I would get it just because I enjoyed the show. I I was I was an empty nest guy. I liked I liked that uh that show. So Yeah, I think by that time though, I was kind of at that age that I started didn't to veer really off a little watch bit. or care anymore. Yeah. 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 So real quick though, that is that the Pee Wee Herman doll in the back that has the string? That is so the... funny story is I had one as a kid growing up, mm-hmm. and in the middle of the night, that thing would go off by itself, and I made my mom get rid of it. <laughs> I made my mom get rid of it. Yeah, that would so creep I was me like, out. Yeah, that I was like seven or eight. Out. Wow. So I know they're really expensive. I could have saved it and sold it on eBay, but no. I yeah. was like, that thing's possessed. Yeah, <laughs> mine, mine's not worth anything because I... I had gotten that, and it was fantastic. And then one winter, I unwittingly left it in the backyard for, like, an entire winter. And so the voice box still works, but it's, like, sped up, like, 20 times. So it's really high. In fact, I'll go grab it and play it on here. That's, but, um, that's even creepier. That's yeah, it bad. is. It is. But it's – it's and it's too bad because I love it, you know, but – Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, the voice box is, is a little busted on it. So John, yeah. take over for a second. Well, we can talk since today, Bengals football. Yes. How, how, what's the outlook for the year? Well, it better be a repeat of last year plus winning the Super Bowl. But look, I've been a Bengals fan all my life. So nothing, I'm just used to being let down. Oh, well, so. Climby River in Chicago. Yeah. I know. Well, he's well. Ed's a Bears fan, mm. so Man. in this house, if he's a Bears fan, I'm a Bengals fan. Um, I'm a, I'm a Cubs fan, and and you can't be a Cubs fan and go in with any sort of like expectations of success. If it they won today, I was there. If it comes, if if it happens, it's great. It's a real nice surprise. It makes the day oh. a little bit better. But you go into it and you're like, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Well, when was the last time the Cincinnati Reds went? They, they, they're horrible. They haven't been good since the early 90s. I would say like so, Pete Rose era. Yeah, well, a little after that. Well, when he managed. You're, you're Barry right? Larkins. When you had like sure. Barry Larkin and, you know. Early 90s. It was good. And then it's just every year is a rebuilding year. Like, how many rebuilding years do you need? Right. Well, in Chicago, we're going on, let's see. Uh... <laughs> All yeah. right. So here is here is my defunct talking Pee Wee Herman. <sighs> yeah. That's, that's, that's it. That's oh, it. It's a little shrill. That's, yeah, it's that's, it's that's a it's a nothing. bummer because it's otherwise in fantastic condition. I mean, like it's physically yeah. in really good in good shape, but I mean the voice box has been shot since like 1988. So I mean oh. it's it's a bummer, but I love I love my Pee Wee. I love my talking Pee Wee. So anyway, um, cats. You have cats. We're cat people. Uh, yes. How many, how many? I can't keep track. How many cats do you got? Okay, four cats. All right. That's it. That we're tapping <laughs> we're not out doing at four. any more than that. That's it. No, we're tapping out at four. I was tapped out at three, but then somebody had to get a cat. <laughs> so, but yes, we have Jigsaw, Gizmo, Squanchy, and Sophia Portrillo. I love all of the names. I love all the names. And Jigsaw was always one of my favorites, too, because not only the name, but because it fits the cat's pattern on its body and stuff like that. That's yeah, pretty Yeah, and she's, was... she's insane. She's absolutely yeah. insane. So yeah. So does she come in the middle of the night and ask you if you want to play a game? No, it's more like <laughs> five in the morning, yeah. and she's yelling in my face. It's like, "Mom, Telling get up!" You, and I'm like, "We no. are going to play a game." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, oh. yeah. No, I uh, I am ousted. Out. What what kills me is is Lily, who's actually just sitting right yeah. here with me right now. There she is in her new blanket. Um, she can't get enough of this damn thing. Um, but no, what kills me is, is she'll come in in the morning and she'll start pawing at me and get me out of bed and everything to, to go make her breakfast. And then finally I'll get up, I'll go and I'll, I'll put all of her food in her bowl and everything like okay. that. And then she looks at me and she just walks away and doesn't eat it. And I'm just like, you just dragged me out of bed for all that, you know, just to make sure that you had it, you know, it's like, 
it's a, yeah. it's, it's something. Well, every morning they get a can of wet food and I get one can of wet food and I split it four ways. So they legitimately get breakfast. Mm. And so I go into the office two days a week. So that is when I get up at six in the morning. When I work from home, I get up at seven. Jigsaw Hello. doesn't know how to tell time. She just knows, <laughs> hey, I can hear mm. the birds outside. So mom, you should get up. Right. So, nope, I feed them, and as soon as they get their wet food, they disperse, and then they leave me alone for a yeah. couple hours, so. Well, what I do is, is I give her wet food first, and I make sure that she eats at least a little bit of that before I give her any dry food, because I want her to have something real, and, but, like, she's like a little kid, and she goes, and I think she just kind of, like, moves the food around a little bit to make it look like she ate it. <laughs> And then she goes around and she sits by where the dry food goes and sits and just waits and looks at me until I fill it with dry food. Dude, cats are smart. They are assholes and they are smart. They know exactly what they're doing. Yes, correct oh, yeah. on all accounts. Yes, absolutely. Well, John, do you have any do you have any I animals? I don't have any now. I've had four cats in my life. They've all been great. I love them. I just don't have since I moved into the condo, I haven't gotten one, but it, it could happen soon. That's fair. But I'm pro cat. Yeah, he's he's yes. definitely had he's had a share of cats in the past for sure. So he's well, he's and a, thing is too, like me, I don't have a fenced in you know backyard, um, you know. And as a pro wrestler, you're never home. So why right. do I want to get a dog, right. a cat? Yeah. You're like, hey, here's extra food. I'll see you in two days. Right. You know? Yeah. So, no, it it is it is it does make it easier for me to like get out of town and things like that if I have to and stuff. So, um. And and just a dog, it, it, yeah. I mean, you're looking at like at least three times a day. Yeah, you have to get like a babysitter, like a legit, yeah. like oh, right. take him to a, a boarding or mom, I need you to come and watch the dog. Yeah, That's walk it. walk them, make sure they get some exercise, so yeah. they don't tear the house apart and everything. It's a lot. Yeah. Uh, John, you got anything else for Heather? We got to make sure she makes this. This I think we covered here. it all. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to face the wrath of her if she doesn't get there for kickoff. So you know, we, she has to give out all her. Uh, all yeah. Her links, all her so links. yeah. So once again, just kind of give a quick uh, recap on your on your show coming up, when the dates are and stuff, and then where on social media can people find you. Okay, so first let's start with the Cincinnati Pride Show. It is called Power Pride Pro Wrestling. Um, it's a drag and wrestling extravaganza. It is November 4th, which is a Friday, in Cincinnati, Ohio, at Humble Monk Brewery. Uh, tickets are available on the website, cincinnatipride.org. Um, front row is only 20 bucks, very limited. Tickets, good. Um, yeah, 20 bucks, 15 for second, and then general admissions, 10 bucks. So we um, want to get everybody in there to see all the talent. That's a great um, deal. Yeah, just have a good time. Um, and then also, we have this thing called Square Circle Expo. I've heard. So hopefully, everybody's following us already on uh, Facebook. But you can check us out on the website. The website is currently not completely up to date. So Facebook is definitely where you want to be for everything. Uh, but that's squaredcirclex.com. Um, I believe actually tomorrow we, so we've already released, um, the VIP, like the main special tickets. And then we're having the VIP, like tickets going to sale tomorrow. So okay. like, yeah, I don't see, I do all the other like stuff when it comes to like, you know, like Ed and Aldapo, they're like, Oh, this and that. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't have to worry about that yet. So. But yeah, go get tickets. They're getting ready to go on sale. Uh, we've already announced one person, Kurt Angle. So that's awesome. It's true. It's, it's true. So that's a big. That's a big name. That's a big name. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Well, so that's, that's awesome. That, that right there is, if nothing else, worth the price of admission. But yeah, you know, that's a big plump bonus for sure. Yeah. Um. But everything else, uh, follow me on Facebook. I post all the time. I take all the pictures because I do all the things. Um, and it's Heather Owens. I have a face, uh, a page, a special page, Hardcore Heather Owens. And mm -hmm. let's see, Twitter and Instagram, it's H2 Owens. Uh, shit, what else do I got? I don't know. I'm on all the social media. Okay, so I am not on TikTok. I okay. do have a profile, but I only have that so I do reviews because companies send me free shit. So I have to mm -hmm. review it. That's the only reason oh. I use TikTok. Okay. 
So I'm not going down that rabbit hole. I'm not. So I've, I've, I don't know how to do a TikTok. I've never downloaded the, the app. I don't good know. For, good for you. It. Snapchat. <laughs> I won't do it. No, Instagram my Instagram little... already has enough videos, like yeah, cat my... videos on Instagram. It's fine. My, my little sister tried to get me hip to the Snapchat and I just wasn't getting it. And I just, I, I felt like I'm just, I've, I'm out, I've out aged it or something like that. Yeah. So and I get, I, there's all these fancy filters and stuff. I don't care. I don't need to look like a damn right. rabbit. It's yeah. fine. So. You <laughs> do have hardcore Heather shirts available at ProWrestlingTees.com. I do still have, Absolutely. I do still have t or t shirts available. Yes. So, um, oh my God. Yeah. Pro wrestling tees. Heather Owens. Go. I got like four designs on there. All very cool. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, if anyone buys any after the airing of this episode, we'll expect some royalties on those. So like 5%. So just so and you know, I'll send you all 50 cents. <laughs> I mean, let's yeah. be honest. Yeah, I I'm know. only yeah. making what, like seven well, bucks. Our shirts are bucks. on there too. So trust nice. me, we know. Yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> um, well, Heather, it's been awesome getting to talk to you. I've, we've really, honestly, I mean, John and I have said many, many times we wanted to get you on the show, and we're glad that we finally did. And, you know, maybe if you've got some time after this show kicks off and you get it done, maybe we can catch up with you and find out how it went and, and, and see uh, how you felt about the whole thing. But, yeah, uh, definitely. Um, no, I really appreciate you guys having me on. Like I said, it's been a while since I've I've done one of these, and um you know, haven't talked to either one of you guys in a yeah, long time. Yeah, it's just I've, nice. I've it's seen just... John a lot, you know, more than I've seen you. Yeah, yeah. Well, thing? he's he's out there. Oh, take it easy. That's a good thing. You know? <laughs> but no, it has. It's seriously though. It has been nice to see you again, and it's been too long. And and unfortunately, we're we're not close enough that we run in the the same you know wrestling circles enough to see each other. But it's it's you know you're. Well, you maybe all... you can come to Squared Circle. Thank you, Heather. I, I've been telling. And I, uh, and I have said, I have said I was fine with going to Squared Circle. I've told well, you But then what's stopping you from going? Nothing. I don't know. What you, tell me when the hell it is and we'll go. Easter I'm weekend. Not, Heather, tell them when Easter it is. Easter week. Uh, it's, Easter um, weekend. It's, okay, what April, is it? March? It is a H April, 7th, April 7th and 8th. It's a Friday and Saturday. What so you not on uh, Easter, you so vacation? you'll be back home. All right. I'm on video right now saying I'll go. I'm not I'm not boycotting the Yay. thing. I said I would be there. You know, you're acting like I've like I'm like, you know, turning you down or something. Where have you been? I don't well let me know. I here's what it's happens. On social here's what media. I post it all yeah, the it's, time. You do. You're and absolutely, we appreciate it. <laughs> you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You're it's on social media, you post it all the time. And then I see all I and then rather than get an invite and being like hey you want to come with it's like hey here i am at the square circle expo and so here i am taking a picture you with your you just Heather gotta drag him. and all this stuff yeah yeah him. just you got to let me know like hey we got to leave friday or whatever the hell to go to this thing and stuff and then i'll be there but you don't you don't say anything and the next thing i know you're posting all these photos and things and there you went without me so don't put it on me. I didn't. I didn't realize that you needed me to do it. I thought you were. Well, what am I supposed to do? Just show up at your house and hope it's the right day and time. Just let me know when the hell it is, and we'll go. Here, I love how I, right. I started this. All now right. This anyway, is a we're gonna continue this anyway, for years no, on, no, no. All right. We're not all right, all right. Let's let Heather get the hell out of here, and you and I can settle this off the air. All right. So. Yes, Jigsaw. Jigsaw says goodbye. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Jigsaw. Um, Heather, thank you again for being with us. Yes, really thank appreciate you. It. Good luck on your show, and hopefully thank we'll you. check back in with you again soon, all right? Yes, thank Bye -bye, you, guys. Peace. All right, take care. Hardcore Heather Owens, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a big get. We've been working on it for a while. We've, we've, we've you know, made a few attempts. We just haven't been able to get schedules lined up, but we finally got something together. And uh, fortunately, it was at a time when she was pushing a very unique show, like she was saying, you know, it's uh, 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 an LGBTQT uh, plus show, plus show. And, uh, with the, you know, we're gonna, they're going to have drag queens and, and all sorts of stuff going on. So it sounds like quite an, a, quite an affair. And uh, if I know Heather and she's running the show, it will be a raucous occasion. So, um, but really great to catch up with her. I haven't seen her in person in years now. So I've seen good. her at the Squared Circle Expo. Yeah. Yeah. Like she said, you've, you've definitely gotten more interaction with her, but, um, 
but for me it was really nice I, she's always been one of my favorites she's a very she's such a sweetheart she's got a just a really big heart she's a very good person always a blast always, she is a trip always been nothing but absolutely nice to me and um and just love her to death so really glad we got to have her on so definitely check out the show if you're in that area or or you're willing to go out to that that area if it's not far from you definitely go check out her show i mean kurt angle is a big draw as far as i'm yeah. concerned i mean first I, name big draw. you know i have to say you know you know I, I said it in the interview that the wrestling show they're gonna have two wrestling shows this year they're gonna have friday night and saturday night that wrestling show was phenomenal. And I know Heather, you know, Heather said that they worked really hard at it and, and absolutely, and, and they had all the right people, but you can have all the right people and, and it still is just a little bit off. That, that show clicked from top to bottom. It, it, had, it had everything, scientific, brawling, this in the audience. Heather, you know, uh, what do you call it? Power bombed a guy, she was a ref. Yeah. And, and all, the, all the wrestling talent, you go to a lot of conventions and the wrestling talent, They'll show up late, they'll leave early, they'll pitch around with each other. And Squared Circle Expo, for like 95% of the time, the wrestler is going to be at his table or her table, signing autographs, meeting, you know, and, and charging really decent prices as well. And if they're not going to be there, like last year, some of them were late because they worked for AEW, they had a show Friday night. That's different, yeah. Right, yeah. but the, the promoters... All they were very um, open with the public, very uh, announcing everything ahead of time. So you knew these wrestlers were not going to be there Friday. Don't expect them Friday. They're going to be there Saturday. Sure. So you know, their line of communication is, is excellent. That's what yeah. I'm trying to say. Well, you're, 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 yeah, what you're hitting on is, is that they're organized and that they, you know, they're doing their jobs. And while that sounds like that should be a pretty simple standard thing it's very actually much a rarity in the world of pro wrestling that the people running the show are doing it with any level of uh organization or consideration for for others i mean so um yeah and let's uh, not forget the first year they did it was right in the middle of covid it got delayed a couple times because of covid then they ran it and there was questions of where the more mass who's going to be able to you know, you're going to be dividers whatever they pulled off a really good first year and the second year topped it and this year the coming up i should say next year 2023 yeah you know to start off with throwing kurt angle out as your first guest yeah. it's pretty impressive yeah i mean I, he's still one on my list i haven't met i mean you know that's uh that would be what that'd be a big one for me but i mean even all that aside i mean they've they've got a good it sounds like she's got a good uh roster put together and i i know she's very discerning and and is 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 selective about who she would put on a show like that or any show for that matter so um i'm sure it'll be top notch i'm sure it'll be a high quality match uh it's a little far out of our jurisdiction to be able to get there i think but um like i said hopefully we can get her back on at some point we can talk to her and find out how it went so yeah we, we should be able to, we should get a recap of that and then do a little as more guests are announced for squared circle expo i'm sure she would be interested yeah, to talk about yeah. that sure yeah um let's see uh well that being said i i want to talk about just a couple of quick things here regarding social media here uh, our, our John G or else YouTube channel is, uh, is just off to a, a, a fantastic start. We would definitely appreciate some more subscribers. If you're, we're getting a lot of views. People are definitely checking out the videos, which is awesome. Um, I think you said that, uh, we've got, uh, our pinfalls retro is over a thousand views. Now we've got the pinfalls from clash at the castles over a thousand views uh reagan lydale versus gpa is over a thousand views so check out the john GRL's podcast youtube page and if you're watching this on youtube you can see that i am wearing the newest and the only of one of well one of two i should say but john g or else podcast t-shirts which you can get for a very reasonable price at Pro wrestling tees.com. You got to look under the John G. The just, John G. Actually, if you just type in John G, it will show up, but you could also type in John G's beat. 
either way. Yeah, John G, John G's beat, it'll come up. I think even if you put it in the John G or else, it'll it'll come up. It might. Because I, I did label the shirt as such. Yeah, as well you should have. Uh, but uh, if you're interested in, in in sporting one, we've got the the one I'm wearing, which is the the color one. Uh, but there's also a sort of uh, retro black and white one that's sort of a callback to the old black and white cartoon days. So uh, check them out if you're interested. We're not making any money on it, really. We're just, you know, allowing the public to share with everybody their favorite podcast and let everybody know when they're walking around town. What they're and if you buy to. one, post it on social media. Yeah, please send us a picture. We want to see we'd it. Lo- yeah, we'd love to see it. So, uh, John, if, if if let's say let's say that you know you get these these special tickets that you're 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 trying to bribe out of uh, uh, Heather here, if you're you know if you let's say you get to you get to go to this this thing and you get your your little VIP pass or your little press pass or whatever the hell it is you do, you know that you beg people for and they want to see like some stuff from the event like some photos of you standing well they want to see photos of the other people you just kind of come as a, a as, you know necessary part, evil part yeah it's part of the deal you just accept that that's what's going to what you're going to get where where john robleski jonathan abdullah robleski <laughs> where could they find your best one yet where could they, they find just look you up, on social media? Just look up John G's Beat. You'll find me everywhere. Social media, YouTube, the website. Um, I do want to promote one real quick thing, though. On my YouTube channel, I'm just right. so very proud and so very excited. <laughs> I just interviewed singer Haley Reinhardt. Very excited about it. She's uh, She was on American Idol in 2011. Mm-hmm. Um, did that for Global Traveler. It's got 50,000 views on Global Traveler already, and it's soaring. So uh, check that out if you can. But Very where good. can they find you? Uh, first of all, before we get there, let me just clarify something. Now, when you say she's got 50,000 views on Global Traveler, is that on Global Traveler's YouTube page? or is No, that on it's, on the, it's on the website. Okay. GlobalTravelerUSA.com. And it's not necessarily on the John G's beat. No, it's on GlobalTravelerUSA.com. I'm but just ma- on, I'm it- just making sure that my record is still intact. That's all I'm asking. Oh there. no, the, no, the video doesn't have fifty thousand views. The the article okay. has fifty thousand. Right, good. Well, you're still tops. Yes, as well I should be. All right, very good. <clears throat> and you were saying where they could find you if the two or three. Well, you, you were supposed to pose the question. You're not. You. Yeah, I did already. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then you said you you. And by uh, the way, you. this little background thing you've got going on, your 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 lower torso keeps cutting out here. It's getting weird. It's like you look like an apparition of yourself or something. You know, it's like the ghost of John. I'm just trying things, you know. man. Yeah. Well, but when the Johnny like, banner actually comes in. I'm just letting um, you know how it's going. That's all. I'm just letting you know how it's going. Well, so, it's better than me being topless. I guess. Yeah. That's <laughs> if you want to put it in a terribly drastic scenario like that, then yeah, I suppose so. If people want to find me on social media, they can find me on the gram at Tommy underscore else. They can find me on the twit. At Tommy underscore else. They can find me on the tube at the Tommy else YouTube channel, or more importantly, the John G or else YouTube channel. Uh, and again, you can find our t-shirts available on pro wrestling tees right now. You can get various sizes, different fabrics, you know, we're working on hoodies. We're working on the hoodies. It sounds like it's a possibility. We just are we're waiting on some more details, but it sounds like hoodies are, are, are possibly uh, forthcoming. They're going to happen one way or the other. Yeah, one way or the other will happen. We're trying to see if we can't make it happen through Pro Wrestling Tees. It sounds like it will happen, So, but we're, uh, we haven't finalized that yet. So we will, of course, keep you posted. So uh, with all that being said, for the John G. Orles podcast, I, of course, have been who else? But Tommy Ellison with me as always is the man on the beat from johngsbeat.com, Mr. 
John Robles. Thanks for listening.